Now we have to deal with the business of writing the equation of a line uh, when we're giving a point on the line and the slope of that line. And guiding this, uh, guiding this process is going to be what I have starred here at the bottom. And that's it's a sort of a fundamental concept I would want my students in, in all my courses to understand about equations and their graphs. And that is that the graph of an equation is all the points that make the equation true. And so we're going to use this concept to kind of motivate um, the, the process of writing the equation of a line. But the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this line. We have enough information to graph it because we have a point on that line, 2 comma 4, and we know the slope, which is 1 over 3. So given the point I can start at, and then I can use the slope 1 over 3, to rise 1 and go right 3 and get a new point. And if I want more points to the left, what I can do is just write a different representation of 1 over 3, like negative 1 over negative 3. And that'll allow me to get points by moving down 1 and left 3 from my starting point. And so now, now I have a line. And so what we really want now is the equation of this line. Now, most equations in algebra um, need variables, all right, because they, they need to be sort of open statements that represent, um, that represent the relationship between the variables. So what I have students do is think to themselves, well, <clears throat> I know that if I take any two points on this line and I calculate the slope, I have to get 1 over 3. That's just a, a fundamental principle of lines. Any two points, if I find the slope between them, I'm going to get 1 over 3. Now, it may not look like 1 over 3. It could be 2 over 6. It could be uh, 3 over 9. But the point is, once you reduce, you'll get 1 over 3. So as a number, the slope of this line is always going to be 1 over 3. So what I'll have students do is um, introduce what I call a variable point and put it on the line. So I'm just going to put it up here. I'm going to call that point x comma y. So that's a point that's supposed to be on the line, but you'll notice it doesn't have any values. Now, if I find the slope between that variable point, that variable point, and any other point on that line, I know that I, if I if I know that it has to equal one over three. And so what I have students do is write the variable point above the point we started with, which we know for sure is on this line. And then just calculate the slope between these two points. Now, we're not going to get a number. We're going to get an expression. So the slope between these two points would be, well, my change in y would be y minus 4. And my change in x would be x minus 2. And I need this to equal 1 over 3 since I'm saying that the variable point is on this line. And what we're looking at now is the equation of this line. Um, and so one thing to point out is that since it's the equation of this line and um, the graph of an equation is all the points that make the equation true, what that means is I can pick any point on this line and if I plug it into this equation, it will yield a true statement. So for example, let's take the point um, negative 4 comma 2. I'm going to plug negative 4 in for x and 2 in for y. And watch what I, watch what I get. So negative 2 in for uh, y. I'm sorry, positive 2. Uh, negative 4, positive 2. I'm going to pause, positive, plug po positive 2 in for y. And negative 4 in for x. And the slope I get should come out to be one-third. And I believe that's what happens. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Divided by negative 4 minus 2 is a negative 6. But notice that reduces to 1 over 3. And that's going to be true for any other point, any other point uh, that I plug in. So this is the equation that corresponds with this graph. Because any point I plug in that's on this 
line is going to make this equation true. Now we often don't write the equation in this way um, because it's um, there's one problem with it, and the problem is that we can't plug in the point we started with, 2, 4. Because if we do, you'll notice we're dividing by 0, because we'd have plugged 2 in for the x, and you'd have 0 in the denominator. And that's a problem. So what we do is we represent it in a different way. So there's, there are statements in math you can represent as division statements that sort of have a corresponding... have a corresponding uh, multiplication representation. And so what we're going for is the multiplication co uh, representation of this equation here. So what I try to get my students to see is that we can think about turning the division statement into a multiplication statement just by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. And when you do that, it moves over there. Likewise, I could multiply both sides of this equation by x minus 2, and that will just leave the y minus 4 by itself. And so then I have I have y minus 4 equals 1 third times x minus 2. And this is the equation of the line. This is the one we like. Because now I can actually plug in 2 comma 4 and it will make the equation true. So there's a couple things to say about this line. One is that um, we can, you know, once students get familiar with this process here of picking a variable point, calculating the slope, and setting it equal to this numerical slope we're given, once they get good at that they can start kind of going right to this form right here. Now that takes a few, you know, a little bit of time and some repetition, but once they get it, they no longer need to write, uh, they no longer need to sort of pick the variable point and, and do the calculation and then sort of swing that x minus 2 over. Um, but I, sto I encourage them to do it in the beginning, at least uh, until they, they get fluent with the, with the process.